It seemed like as early as 2017, Joe Biden was doing everything in his power to differentiate himself from Bernie Sanders. He, as One Nation article put it, was trying to be the anti-Bernie going into 2020 because he knows that Bernie Sanders has the progressive wing of the Democratic Party on lock, so there's really no point in him even trying to win them over. And if you just look at it from a strategic point of view, I can see how that makes sense. However, he recently kind of did a 180, and all of a sudden, he's now trying to convince us that he's not only progressive, but he's the most progressive out of everyone. I know I get criticized. I'm told I get criticized by the new left. I have the most progressive record of anybody running for the United anybody who would run. I didn't mean... Did anybody who would run? So I don't, <laughs> I really don't know how to even respond to that because I know that he knows that that is false. It's demonstrably untrue. A quick five minute Google search will lead you to Joe Biden's horrific record. Now, why is Joe Biden specifically not progressive, even if I'm preaching to the choir? But for anyone who doesn't know, why is he not progressive? Well, there's two reasons. First of all, he lacks progressive policy positions currently. And second of all, he doesn't have a progressive policy record. So let's talk about his record. Just going over some of the worst things he's done, he let his colleagues berate Anita Hill and embarrass Anita Hill. He wrote and voted for the 1994 crime bill. He voted to gut welfare. He voted to repeal Glass-Steagall. He voted for NAFTA. He voted for the Iraq War. He voted for the Patriot Act. He voted for a border wall in 2006. He spoke out against net neutrality before in 2006 and 2008, and he has not clarified clarified his position as far as we know, and when it comes to his current policy positions, he doesn't support Medicare for all. He doesn't support breaking up the big banks. He doesn't support free college. He hasn't said anything to my knowledge about the Green New Deal. He frequently praises Republicans who are a psychopathic death cult. He is incredibly creepy and doesn't know how to respect the boundaries of women. You can see exhibits A, B, and C. Now, on top of that, he doesn't understand why the situation in America is so dismal for the working class because even if he acknowledges that income inequality is a problem, well, he's unable to identify who's the cause of that underlying problem. I love Bernie, but I'm not Bernie Sanders. I don't think 500 billionaires are the reason why we're in trouble. We have not seen this huge concentration of wealth. And the folks at the top aren't bad guys. I get in trouble in my party when I say wealthy Americans are just as patriotic as poor folks. I found no distinction. I really haven't. But this gap is yawning. It's gaping. And it's having the effect of pulling us apart. You see the politics of it. So he acknowledges on one hand that income inequality is in fact a problem. However, he's trying to avoid the fact and the harsh reality that American oligarchs have been essentially buying off politicians to do their bidding and rig the entire system in favor of them and against all of us. So if you don't identify both the problem and the cause of the problem, then you're not going to be able to adequately apply a solution to the problem. And what he's doing there is pandering to the rich who are potential donors to him. So that's why Joe Biden isn't progressive. And furthermore, when it comes to all of the issues facing millennials and, you know, the future generation, Gen Z after millennials, well, he doesn't actually take their concerns seriously. In fact, he condescendingly talked down about millennials when he, you know, heard about us complaining about our issues. The younger generation now tells me how tough things are. Give me a break. <laughs> no, no. I have no empathy for it. Give me a break. Because here's the deal, guys. We decided we were going to change the world, and we did. Now, to give you some more context, in that clip, he was talking about how, look, my generation, we had our own fair share of problems too. There, there was the Vietnam War. There was the civil rights era. But you know what we did? We didn't just sit around and complain about it. We actually took action. But 
I'm sure that when you were taking action, the generation before you, Joe, probably took what you were protesting as complaining as well. So what you're doing is likely what was done to you when you were once a young person. And also, young people today have a very unique set of problems that you never had to deal with and you couldn't be empathetic towards. So even if we have our own wars and our own civil rights issues that we have to deal with, we have a very unique set of problems economic as well as social problems but he doesn't want to identify that because like we all have problems so this is just part of life it's par for the course if you're growing up there's going to be issues so stop complaining millennials actually take action but we are taking action that's what we're doing specifically and bernie sanders is catalyzing this movement that is largely comprised of young voters so he's trying to downplay our legitimate concerns about this rigged economy and then he's trying to pander to rich people simultaneously if you do all of these things you're just not a progressive it's demonstrably false so i honestly am puzzled by his sudden 180 here because if you're going to be the anti-bernie strategically that makes sense just don't piss off progressives and poke the wounds you know what i mean but he's all of a sudden trying to now say that he is progressive it makes no sense. So when it comes to Joe Biden's supposed progressivism, he doesn't have a single leg to stand on. However, think about this. If he says something like that, how would you respond if you were on the opposite side of the political spectrum? Here's what Donald Trump said in response to Joe Biden's speech there. He tweeted out, Joe Biden got tongue-tied over the weekend when he was unable to properly deliver a very simple line about his decision to run for president. Get used to it. Another low IQ individual. So that is a very idiotic <laughs> reason to criticize Joe Biden. When I see Joe Biden, I come at him from the left and I say, no, you're not progressive. Here's reasons X, Y, and Z. But if you're Donald Trump and you're a moron, then you have to criticize him because he got tongue-tied and misspoke and completely avoid the substance. And it's because Donald Trump himself has no substance and he's projecting here. We all know that he's a low IQ individual and he misspeaks all the time. Tim Apple happened last week and he tried to pretend as if he was doing that on purpose. So I don't get why you would try to criticize Joe Biden for that reason, but it just kind of shows that if we have this scenario where it's really the worst case scenario where you have Joe Biden versus Donald Trump, there will be no substance whatsoever like there was in 2016. So I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that we get someone like Bernie Sanders as the nominee because I'm sick of these politicians trying to skirt around the issues that we care about. Just hit us with policy nonstop. Don't brag about your progressive credentials that don't exist. Actually, say what you want to do now. That's progressive. That would improve our lives. So, you know, the, the lack of substance policy-wise that we're already seeing in 2020 is very troubling to me. And now with the rise of Beto O'Rourke, who has launched his 2020 campaign with zero policies, just all platitudes. In fact, the only policy substance we learned that's new about Beto is that he flipped on Medicare for All. Now he's explicitly against it. So if, if this is what we have to expect, then we are in for a very long election cycle. And I just want candidates to be focused on policy, nothing else. But we're not going to get that from Joe Biden, because when you look at the substance policy wise, there's, there's not a lot there to brag about. And same is true for Trump. So, um, you know, we'll see. But certainly getting back to Joe Biden, I mean, I don't even have to tell you guys he's not progressive. I think it's just laughable. And even centrists would have to admit he's not progressive. Just stay in your lane, Joe. Be the anti-Bernie if you're going to be the anti-Bernie. But don't try to be, you know, Hillary and Bernie simultaneously because it's going to backfire. It's just not going to work. You could support the Humanist Report at Patreon dot com slash humanist report but trust me i'd have way more supporters on patreon if that was my podcast sad <laughs>